Today is a great day. Um, I am so excited to be here in Kansas City. I can't tell you all the emotions that have been going through my head whenever you know, the pen hit the paper and to be a part of you know, what the organization, everything that we have going on in this city. It's really exciting for me. It's really exciting for my family. And I can't thank the Hunt family enough. Um, Beach, Coach Reed, Spags, uh, the entire organization of the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I'm excited for this and I can't wait to get to work. So at this point, we'll take questions. Let's go first to Herbie T.O.P. with the Kansas City Star. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Justin, welcome to Kansas City, man. Thank you, thank you. So happy to be here. Yeah, I have two questions for you. The first one, obviously free agency is always about choices. Uh, why yeah. the Chiefs? Why did you choose the Chiefs? Yeah, so they had a little, we had a few options. Um, but really when it came down to it and you took the, the financial bit of it does play a role too. When you, take, when you take all that away, you start to look at the fit and the culture and the opportunity that's put in front of you. Um, I want to play for a championship quality, a championship caliber team. Um, I want to play in a system that I thought would fit me, would be able to highlight my strengths. And when you looked at the defense that Spags run and you look at you know, the Chiefs being in the AFC championship three years in a row, going to make that four. Um, it's just, it, it really felt right. You know, I slept on it one day came back to it and, you know, in, in, in the back of my mind, bottom of my heart, I was like, you know what, Kansas City is, is really the best situation and fit for me. So we're gonna pull the trigger on that one. Nice. And, and then in 2018, obviously your rookie season, you got a chance to play alongside Tyron Matthew. Um, and, and by all accounts, it looks like you're, you're gonna be taking a spot here. When you look back at your rookie year, what was the biggest thing you learned from Tyron that you've applied to your pro career? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things. I had a great veteran group in front of me. It was Tyron Matthew, Kareem Jackson, and Jonathan Joseph. And I took things from each one of them. Um, J. Joe taught me um, just really on the mental side of the game, taking notes on basically everything. You could ask J. Joe, J. Joe any question, he'd have an answer to it. Kareem taught me how to be competitive. Um, we had a saying that we say to each other every day, just about we're going to spin heavy today. You know what I mean? It's an attitude. And Tyron, um, I'll never forget his thing was a mentality and attitude to the work ethic and playing with just a savviness, you know, um, he called a championship swagger fall for it. Uh, his pregame speeches were second to none. You know what I mean? So he was a big leader in the room. He's somebody that everybody gravitated to. Um, so whenever he did leave Houston, um, I kind of took over a little bit of that role. Um, by the precedent that he had set. So Tyron is an unbelievable guy. He's an unbelievable player. Um, he's a friend of mine. And, you know, whoever ends up picking him up from free agency is going to be lucky to grab a guy like that. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey Brad, I'll have a, a quick follow-up. Kind of dovetailing off of the, the Tyron question, uh, why is positional versatility, what he does for a team and just playing so many different roles, why is that a source of pride for you? Uh, and how much do you look forward to doing that in, in the SPAG system? Yeah. So whenever you're be able to, whenever you're put all over the place, you're a guy that, you know, has to be washed out for. I mean, we played Kansas City, you know, two more times, actually three more times um, since Tyron was playing over here. And I remember in our team meetings rooms, whenever you kind of highlight the problem players on the other side of the ball, um, we'd always say how much of a problem Tyron was because he'd line up in so many different positions that you always had to be aware of where he was at all times. So that is powerful whenever you have a weapon that's dynamic and versatile and can be put in different places on the field because it makes the offense try and think a little bit more and try and find ways to counter you. And when they're thinking about you and not thinking about their responsibilities, you know what I mean? That's a tendency for, there's an open opportunity and window there for you to make some plays. Also, um, even furthermore, like the injury rate in NFL is 100%, you know, so whenever you have a guy that's able to fill multiple roles and he's, you know, willing and has a want to to do it, then that lets you to play the best 11 men on the field at all times. I had an opportunity to hear you on Sirius this morning and, and you were talking about getting the roster pictures and learning everyone's face. Uh, I yeah. imagine that comes with the leadership role. Uh, how much has the organization talked to you about coming into the locker room and being a leader of men in that fashion. And why is that a strategy of, of yours? Yeah, I think we mutually um, understand that this is something I want to do. But at the end of the day, that's not something that's just given or appointed to someone. That's something that you earn in the locker room 
with the guys themselves. So that's why it's a big point to me that I want to be able to shake every man's head, every man's hand in that locker room, look them in the eye and know them by their name. You know what I mean? In order to receive respect, you first have to give respect. So I'm big on that. I want to earn these guys respect. I want to prove to them that I can be the leader. Um, but that's not something that's just giving to me. I have to earn that. Let's go next to Adam Teicher with ESPN. Go ahead, Adam. Adam, I think we're having some audio trouble with you there. Give it another shot. All right, we're going to come back to you, Adam. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Justin, welcome to Kansas City. I appreciate you. Hey, you you talked about Tyron a little bit, but you know, coming to Kansas City, you know, how much of it is you feel like that the role that you're going to be playing in Kansas City is stepping into what he did versus, you know, being you and and letting Spags, you know, deploy you in the ways that you 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 play best. I mean, do you see yourself yeah. playing a similar role to Tyron or something different? Yeah. So I have always said this that a copy is never worth as much of original. There will never, ever, ever be another Tyron Matthew to come through Kansas City. They just won't. But I can bring the best Justin Reed possible to Kansas City. So that's my mentality. I'm going to play to my strengths. I'm going to play to who I am. Um, I'm going to play to the defense. And, you know, Spags has some creative things that we're going to do going forward. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to play great defense. We're going to play great ball. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Justin, welcome, and, and thanks for doing this. I have two questions for you. Um, when you go through a free agent process for the first time, can you just sort of give us a picture of, of what it was like, how many teams you were sort of uh, thinking about it, and, and why necessarily um, Kansas City sort of just was more reassuring to you in some sense, and then Brad will have a follow-up. Yeah. yeah, so going through free agency, is kind of like a little bit of a limbo, you know what I mean? Because you end the season, like for me in Houston, um, you know, you're still rooted and connected there. You kind of start figuring out, you know, okay, what's going to happen next. You really have no idea, you know. Um, you start to hear little whispers, you know, maybe this team might be interested, maybe this team might be interested, but nobody really knows for sure until the tampering window opens and then teams actually start, you know, putting offers on the table. So um, before you actually have some official information, it's kind of just, just anxious. You don't know what's going to happen next. A little bit like the draft is, except now this time you have a little bit more decision-making power in it. Um, and whenever offers did start getting put on the table, I talked along with my agent, Joel, and, you know, we sifted through them, um, really just tried to find a situation that made the most sense. And for me, that ended up being Kansas City. Um, and having looked back on it, it really happened all kind of kind of fast, to be honest with you, from agreeing to terms to getting on the PJ to, you know, signing the contract. That was over the span of 48 hours. So it all happens really fast. But uh, I'm so excited about the opportunity. Um, that I have and that we have here. And, and to that, Justin, how much did you know about Steve Spagnuolo and how much of the conversations you had with him and sort of his vision for you, uh, obviously knowing your skill set, just what did you learn from that conversation uh, that leads you to believe that, that this is the best fit? Yeah, um, he's, his defense is very dynamic. And I love that, you know I mean? He has so many different wrinkles that's put in it, um, playing a too high, switching it up and playing the zone, um, blitzing on occasion. Um, I think I said a little bit earlier, I, I would love to highlight um, blitzing a little bit more and add that to my game. So all of that really intrigued me. Um, he's had a long history of success and I was, you know, I'm excited to be a part of that. Let's go back to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam, give that a try. Can you hear me this time? Me this time? Oh, we can hear you, we got you. Great. Uh, hey, welcome to Kansas City, Justin. Um, you played, as you mentioned earlier, against the Chiefs a few times. What was, did you get a sense from playing against them over the years what it was like to play here? And can you sort of elaborate on that? And Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Um, did anybody else catch what he said? There's a little echo. I couldn't, I couldn't really make up. Yeah. Adam, why don't, why don't we try again? Why don't you mute your computer? Because I think that's giving us some feedback. Adam, you got us? All right, Adam, we're going to come back to you again. Let's go, let's go to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. 
That's perfect. My question is similar, actually, so I can ask it for Adam. Um, hey, Justin, welcome to KC, man. Um, you've had a chance to play in Kansas City as an opponent before. Yeah. Uh, what was it like, uh, that experience for you just being in Kansas City and kind of feeling the, the oh, loudness, man. for lack of a better term, and, and how excited yeah. are you to be a part of that now? Yeah, man, it was nuts. It was nuts. It, it, was a, it was a completely electric atmosphere. You could literally feel the hairs on my arms stand up every time we stepped out there. Um, a lot of times then in the way that I wanted to plan for Houston, uh, but it was an electric atmosphere. I had so much fun playing in stadiums like that. There's really only a couple that really give you the feeling that um, Arrowhead Stadium can give you. I believe Seattle's one of those. Um, the Saints are one of those. Um, and then here, obviously. And this is an open stadium, and how loud it get is, is absolutely insane. I'm really excited to um, actually be on the field now while the crowd is going crazy. Um, a lot of times I was just on the sideline whenever – they're being loud for the Kansas City Chiefs uh, defense. Um, but now to be a part of that, I'm so excited to, you know, um, feed into the culture here, um, be a part of the fan base, help get those guys going, and then have them give us a little bit of energy too because it really makes a tangible def a tangible difference whenever the crowd is into the game and they get loud. Um, and it actually energizes and boosts us as players on the field. So it makes a tremendous difference. Uh, I can't wait to strap up and step out in front of them and play for them. We've got three more. We'll go right down the line, starting with Darren. Go ahead, Darren. Hey, Justin. Uh, welcome to Kansas City again, and uh, hopefully you get a chance to enjoy some of the culture that we have to offer here. Um, that being said, a couple of questions for you. One, have you spoken with Tyron Matthew since you signed with Kansas City? No, I haven't spoken with him yet. Okay, but but knowing that you know you played with him your rookie year, as as you told Herbie, we talk about the leadership, and of course when he when when the Chiefs brought him in, he was pretty much replacing Eric Berry in the leadership that he brought, not only in the locker room but also on the field. What did you take away during your time playing with him as a rookie that will put you in that same situation when you come in and and give that give off the same respect? And then also, what do you think you'll be able to learn with your other backfield mates like Juan Thornhill and some of the other players on defense? Yeah. So what I've learned is, because I've kind of got to see both sides of the coin, I've learned what the team can do when you have a strong central voice and leadership like that. And I also know what problems arise when there's a lack of voice and leadership at the same time. So I understand fully how important it is to have that voice um, be a central point of leadership on a team and make a difference to have having guys hold each other accountable, going out there, play hard and having guys play their best ball. So me knowing that has encouraged me to be that guy. Um, I doesn't have to just be me. I know there's plenty of leaders already on the team too. Um, and the more leaders there are, the better. You know what I mean? As long as guys take accountability and ownership of the team and what direction we're going to hand it, we're going to go in, which has been done here, you know what I mean, very well for a long time. Um, that's going to turn into good results. I forgot the second part of your question. I'm sorry. Yeah, the second part was just based. Well, I was asking more so, you know, what are you hoping to to uh, learn from your teammates that you have here, like a Juan Thornhill and, and the other players on defense? Yeah, yeah. So I actually met um, Thornhill in Arizona. We we're training together at the Exos facility. So we talked a little bit. Um, we're about the same size, a lot of similar characteristics. I think it's going to be fun um, that we'll be able to be interchangeable in the roles that we play. We'll go last two, Steve, and then back to Adam. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, Justin, what's up, man? Welcome to Kansas City. I appreciate you. How's it going? Hey, it's all right, man. Uh, Chiefs Kingdom, you talked about them. Uh, they're one of a kind, man. Uh, when, 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 when they like a player, they attach themselves to that player on and off, both on and off the field. But uh, my question for you is, what's your message to Chiefs Kingdom, man, about what they can expect from you on and off the field? You can expect the guy that's going to be not only physical, but a guy that's going to play, make plays on the ball, um, be that field general on the back end, make sure everything is airtight, and I make a point out of it, man. I try and put it on tape every week. I've actually had receivers come and talk to me about when they see me on tape. If there is a guy in the wrong color jersey in my area, and you know he's not an offensive lineman, someone that's the same size as me, uh, I'm going to make him pay for coming in my space. You know what I mean? So that's a point that I make. Um, I make it a point to put it on tape every week. I'm going to be physical. We're going to play good ball. We're going to be smart. We're not going to get a ton of flags. Um, and we're going to find ways to get to the ball because on defense, the thing that matters more than anything else is finding a way to get the ball. And we'll give Adam another shot. Adam, go ahead. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Let's All do right. it. Are we good this time? Ooh, you got quite the echo there, Adam. Is, do you have your computer on too? Yeah, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill my computer here. So hang, just hang with me one second. All right. 
Let's turn your mic and put okay, down. Good now? There yeah. you go. We got you. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, Justin, welcome to Kansas City. Um, just um, curious. You mentioned this earlier. You played with the Chief against the Chiefs three, four times in your career. Did you get a sense what it was like to play against the Chiefs from from those games? And, and if so, what was that? And Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Uh, did I get a sense what it would be like to play for the Chiefs, or would I get yes. a sense? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, it kind of felt like the Chiefs were a conference opponent. We played them so many times, um, but just. What I've gotten out of my experience playing against them is that in this fan base, in this culture, on this team, as long as there's time on the clock, you always have a chance to win. You know what I mean? I, and you can even break that, take that back to when there's 13 seconds on the clock and I was watching, you know what I mean? You were able to score a touchdown and go and take that game into overtime and, and all of that. Like, as long as there's time on the clock, the energy, the amount of talent that's on this team is unbelievable. I mean, 2019, we experienced it firsthand whenever, you know, the Texans were up 24 points. And by halftime, we're down two touchdowns. So as long as there's time on the clock, as soon as momentum shifts, um, the crowd gets into it, really pumps the players up. And once the ball gets rolling, it's a very hard train to stop. Um, and that's really good for the Chiefs organization and for you know, Chiefs kingdom in general. Okay. And uh, did you ever talk to Tyron about what it was like to play here? And if so, what did he tell you about what, what it's like to play for the Chiefs? Yeah, so I haven't talked to Tyron yet. Um, I actually know a couple of guys that have been through here, though. Um, some of them up the top of my head, like Eric Murray, um, Martinez Rankin came here for a little bit. A um, couple of guys, but all of them tell me, I mean, how great of a how great of an experience that they had here. They said this is a city that they will raise their kids in. Um, they said that the culture, first of all, the food and the barbecue is amazing. You won't run short or out of places to go eat. Um, they said when you drive up on game day. Um, miles away, you'll start to smell the barbecue. Um, and they talk about just how electric the fan base is once, every, once you actually did get on the field. So I'm looking forward to all of those things. Justin, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. All right, guys. That is it for today. Um, give me